On the streets of Jakarta, hundreds of high school students arm themselves ready to fight. These brawls go on for hours, leaving a trail of blood and battered bodies. Police, parents, and principals are at a loss to explain the violence. I'm Steve Chow. On this episode of 101 East, we go to the front lines of these teenage battles to find out why so many kids are willing to fight and even kill their fellow students. Check this out. Anak yamak setara, kopinya pisek saura, gak mikirin masa depan, bakalan jadi berantakan. Anak yamak setara, pengen dibilang jagoan, sia-siain sekolah, yang kayak gini bakalan jadi sampah. Street rules among students have been a custom in Indonesia for decades. But these regular fights between rival schools known as Tawaran have now evolved into something much more sinister. Over the past five years, more than 130 pupils have died in nearly 800 brawls in and around Jakarta. Schools should be about learning and growing as people, not a place to plan violence on other students. What is it that prompts school kids like this to leave the classroom, to pick up a stone or a stick or, or even a samurai sword and stage pitch street battles? These aren't classroom fistfights. They're premeditated armed clashes. Sometimes it's even to the death. Why do they do it? Mohammed Billy Ababil loved football. And when he left school, he wanted to join the army. He started high school last September, but his new school worried his mum. No Hariati didn't want to send her son there, but she had no choice. It was the only school in the area that she could afford. Aku tadinya nggak mau masukin sekolah ini, karena kan sekolah ini ada tetangga aku ini yang nakal, tawuran terus kan, tawuran terus dia berani sama orang tuanya. <laughs> Did you ever talk to Billy about about this this cultural rioting, this brawling in the street? Did you ever have a conversation with him to warn him how dangerous it is? Aku tahu sekolah ini nggak tahu tawuran. Padahal memang suka juga tawuran dia, tapi aku nggak tahu. Almarhum nggak pernah cerita, Billy nggak pernah cerita kalau ada tawuran di sekolah itu dia nggak pernah cerita. Billy wanted to fit in, so when an after-school brawl was arranged via text messages, he headed straight to a fight, just like this one. The violence attracts an audience of fellow students who post their videos online. On the day Billy joined the fight, his side was outnumbered. They lost, and he was stabbed several times. Nearby residents tell me about that day. They first saw Billy on the back of a bike, bleeding heavily. Pemirsa aksi tawuran kembali terjadi di Pademangan, Jakarta Utara akibat terlibat tawuran seorang pelajar sekolah menengah kejuruan tewas setelah terkena tusukan pada bagian dada saat tawuran dengan sekolah lainnya. At Billy's home, his mum sensed something was terribly wrong. Memang setelah jam tiga itu pas kejadian itu aku berasa seperti ditusuk, aku seperti ditusuk, dan aku langsung bangun kan tidur, 
setelah bangun mau gosok sebentar setelah gosok sebentar baru ada kabar kalau anakku tertusuk tawuran aku reflek ngejerit aku ngejerit sebisa si kuat kalau kalau aku nggak sanggup untuk lihat jenazahnya aku nggak sanggup Muhammad Billy Ababil ini tergeletak di dekat rel kereta api. Billy had been stabbed in the chest, abdomen, and buttocks. By the time the paramedics arrived, he bled to death. His loss has devastated his mother, leaving her desperate to find out why it happened. She even thinks she knows who did it. You have a name on this post-it nose. Why do you think this man, this boy, is responsible? Karena polisi yang bilang. Polisi yang bilang it, si pembunuh. Do you know if the police have done anything to finding the suspect? Kayaknya pertama ada, tapi aku tahu kalau sekarang enggak. Enggak tahu deh aku juga kalau sekarang enggak pernah komunikasi. Karena aku udah lelah. Aku udah males lah. Kayaknya udah gimana ya. Danu Maulana Putra and his mates are in the 12th grade of another Jakarta high school and they're seasoned street fighters. How, how young were you when you actually first started fighting? Kali pertama itu 10 tahun, 10 tahun SD itu. Waktu saya SD. Ya, saya ya lawan sekolah, sekolah tetangga lah. Why do you get involved in street brawling? What is it that you get out of it? Yang saya dapatkan itu pengalaman percaya diri, gengsi, adrenalin dan kekuatan. Can you explain a little bit about how you arrange to meet for the fighting? Kan kita punya basis. Jadi saya harus men- menuju wilayah buat untuk pulang melewati sekolah musuh. Kalau mereka sudah menunggu, ya udah, saya ketemu di jalan, ya tawuran. In traffic clogged Jakarta, the parks are a place to exercise and relax. But for the street fighters, they offer something more. In past decades, the kids used to, used to fight with their fists. But nowadays, they use weapons, and one of the school kids was telling me they hide those weapons in parks like this because they can't take them to school. And this is his. And this is why kids are now dying. Talk to me a little bit about the sort of weapons that you use, the choice of weapons, and you, would, you know, the, the, the sort of seniority that you have to have to use certain weapons. Kalau gre- gre- kelas 1 tuh grade 1 itu samurai, senjata tajam, celurit, knife, golok. Kalau kelas 2 itu uh, bisa di- bisa pilih senjata tajam samurai atau ikat pinggang, kelas 3 itu ikat pinggang saja cukup. Karena kelas 1 itu harus mulai belajar mandiri. Harus punya kekuatan sendiri, harus berani. The seniors tell the younger students that Tauran is a rite of passage. It's how you prove that you're now a man. Is it the intention to kill the other kids? Is that what your target is? No. Very happy. So why do you think some people are being killed? Is it just going too far? Are people doing it uh, when they shouldn't be? There's a way to do it. Sebenarnya itu tergantung pribadi orang masing-masing. Kalau saya sendiri, ya nggak akan berlebihan. Mungkin saya cuma tujuan bersenang-senang, jadi masa adrenalin bukan untuk begitu. In another neighborhood in Jakarta, another family grieves the loss of a teenage son. Andy Audi Pratama was 17 when his group was ambushed by a rival school gang in 2014. When his mother, Alita Hidayat, heard the news, she rushed to the hospital. I pikir cuman uh, namanya tawuran luka-luka ya itu yang ada di kepala saya. 
pas saya tiba di rumah sakit itu, masya Allah, nggak uh, bisa ngelihat uh, saat itu saya nggak bisa lihat jelas anak itu karena nggak kuat. Giginya itu yang udah nggak ada tersisa satupun. Kemudian di sininya bekas uh, luka uh, golf stick golf hancur dan dan tulang rusuknya patah uh, kepala tengkorak belakang itu retak gitu. beberapa setiap menit keluarin semburan darah listed as critical Audi was due to have an operation at nine the next morning he died at eight the police were quick to investigate Audi's murder two boys were arrested and charged his mother, Elita, went to court and saw them convicted and sentenced to three years in prison. Do you feel there was some sort of justice for Audi? Tentunya enggak, enggak akan pernah saya dapat. Karena nyawa anak saya yang enggak bersalah uh, melayang. Tapi setidaknya Mereka dapat imbalan yang memang seharusnya mereka dapat. Mengingatkan mereka masih di bawah umur. Jadi masih kena undang-undang anak. Tapi itu kan sebenarnya perlakuan yang nggak masuk di akal untuk anak-anak. Apalagi mereka pelajar. Yang harus sudah menggunakan apa alat-alat tajam. Erlita tells me how she asked the police to look for the other youths involved in her son's fatal beating. She says the officers told her she would have to pay for the investigation to continue. I arranged to meet a police spokesman and ask him about her litter's claim. What's your reaction to that? Jadi untuk kita mau menetapkan tersangka ya, tentunya kita kan berdasarkan ada barang bukti, ada saksi ya. Jadi ada dua kas dua tersangka sudah kita ajukan, tetapi uh, asumsi ya, asumsinya itu adalah banyak tersangka. Tentunya polisi di dalam melaksanakan tugas harus melihat fakta-fakta hukum di lapangan. Kalau misalnya itu e, memang ada alat bukti maupun saksi yang menyatakan bahwa e, satu dua orang lagi yang melakukan, tentunya kita tetap akan bisa mengajukan ke penuntut umum dan tidak ada tidak ada namanya untuk membayar kepada pihak kepolisian agar untuk menersangkakan orang tidak ada. Jadi kemarin ada informasi di. While the police deny asking for money to work on a case, they do admit that it's often difficult to gather evidence to convict street brawlers, including those who killed Audi and Billy. Billy's mom has a post-it sticker on her wall um, of a name that she was given at the time as, as the chief suspect by the police. Can you tell us if anybody in particular has been arrested, has been questioned? Jadi namanya kita menetapkan suatu tersangka itu ya kita harus uh, betul-betul mengetahui apakah benar dia itu adalah pelakunya dan kita juga harus ada saksi ya, yang mengetahui bahwa dia benar-benar pelakunya dan kemudian uh, kita juga harus uh, dengan selain saksi kan juga ada saksi ahli juga harus kita kita tanyakan juga. So that sounds like a dead end. Does that mean she's very unlikely to see anybody brought to justice for his death? Jadi tentunya dari pihak kepolisian ya tetap aja untuk menyelidiki kasus ini. With the police struggling to punish the offenders, I go to a Jakarta high school to ask the principal how he deals with street brawls. Sekolah kita melakukan berbagai macam strategi. Salah satunya adalah koordinasi dengan pihak kepolisian dan juga adanya kelompok kerja wakil kepala sekolah kesiswaan melalui media WhatsApp sehingga uh, kita bisa mengantisipasi mengurangi kegiatan tawuran-tawuran yang terjadi But he is the first to admit they are struggling to understand why fights start in the first place Pada prinsipnya mungkin karena gengsi ya gengsi mereka terutama ya emosi Jiwa muda itu yang yang perkiraan kita.
Dulu kita kalau di bengkel nih ngasal besi itu buat berantem. Former pupil Arif Rahman believes he knows the route. He's written a book about his own street brawling and talks to students about how it threw his life off course. Dulu kalau zaman dulu tawuran nih polisi itu cuma nembak doang dah, nggak ada nangkap. Karena emang nggak berani nangkap. Saya termasuk yang sering nginep di polisi sama koramil dulu. Pertarungan tawuran pelajar itu sebenarnya persoalan antara nama identitas kelompok, identitas sekolah, bukan lagi masalah pribadi. Kalaupun ada masalah pribadi di dalamnya, itu karena kita ingin menunjukkan eksistensi diri kita. Kitalah yang akan bisa mengharumkan nama sekolah. Kitalah yang terkuat, kitalah yang terhebat, kitalah yang paling berani melawan kelompok-kelompok yang memusuhi kita. Gitu. They think it's about prestige, about right of passage to being a man. How do you stop that when it is part of the Indonesian culture? Nah, tawuran pelajar itu sebenarnya warisan, bukan budaya. Kakak kelas meninggalkan persoalan kepada adik-adiknya bahwa sekolah kita punya musuh. Tapi mereka inilah sebenarnya orang-orang yang uh, kehilangan orientasi belajar, yang menganggap sekolah itu hanya sebagai sebuah bukan tempat pembelajaran. Mereka mencari teman, mereka mencari pengalaman, gitu. Nah, kenapa mereka berada di dalam grup-grup ini, di dalam kelompok-kelompok ini? Karena mereka menganggap bahwa kelompok inilah yang menerima mereka. Dan sekolah tidak memahami itu. Nah, tawuran pelajar itu sebenarnya problemnya di situ, gitu loh. Bisa nggak sih tawuran itu di-stop gitu? Seharusnya bisa. Cuman nggak bisa nah, dikembalikan kepada siswanya. Kamu jangan tawuran ya. Oh, nggak bisa. Karena apa? Karena persoalannya itu antara kelompok. This group psyche means greater confidence and violence. And sometimes death, leaving families broken. I've come back to Billy's neighborhood after a phone call from his mother. She's given up waiting for the police to find her son's killer. But she's tracked down a friend of the boy she thinks is responsible. And she's asked us to go with her. She wants to confront this friend to see if she can find out where the boy she believes killed her son lives, and then we can go there too. I think... We walk the rest of the way to the friend's house where Billy's mom pleads for his help. So this is the friend of the boy that she believes killed her son. He's now promised to take her to see that boy, to see the guy she wants to confront. The friend who was also in the brawl when Billy died doesn't want to be identified, but he agrees to show her the house of the suspect. Itu anak masih kecil. Seharusnya kalian kan udah gede. Apa ya operaktif? Oh jangan nih anak kecil anak kecil gini. Jangan malah ikut ikutan tahu tawuran. Enggak saya juga nggak nyalain kamu nggak nyalain apa. Saksi dari si musuh kan kamu. Bapak kamu kan ngomong kemarin sama saya. Kalau nggak pakai duit mah maaf maaf aja kan gitu kan polisi. Buat apa saya pakai duit? Anak saya aja udah meninggal saya pakai duit. Beda anak saya ngebunuh puluhan juta pun gua jabadin. Saya pun nemuin kamu tuh dari almarhum supaya saya ketemu kamu. We head into the district, asking for the house of the boy she wants to confront. But the friend who promised to help now says he's not sure where the boy lives. So we go to the community leader's house. He calls the district leader to ask for help. RT7, RW2, ditangkap ya? Kapan tuh? Oh, semalam sekarang ada di mana? Alhamdulillah, tetap polis. Oh, ada di Polsek? Polsek mana? Polsek 712, biasa. Masih pada mana? Oh, ya di Polsek yang di lapangan Banteng. 
Oh iya 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 iya. Penuhnya ya. Oke deh terima kasih terima kasih. <laughs> ya. Ah, ini mau dibawa eh, mau disamperin ke Sono ya. Oh, semalam udah takut sama kantin kita lalu dibawa ke Polsek 712 lapangan Banteng. Mana Pak? Di mana Pak? Polsek mana? Ah. Catat itu. Dekat Bu. Ya, Polseknya saya tahu. Tahu ini lapangan Banteng sini, ya. lapangan Banteng. Seberang departemen keuangan di situ. Dekat dekat situ. Oh. But just moments after being told the boy she believes killed her son has been arrested, she discovers it's not him. The community leader then suggests we meet the district leader he spoke to on the phone to see if he can help track down this family. No Hariati is now pinning all her hopes on the district leader. He arrives, but he's not pleased to see us with her. Billy's mother starts to explain how she can only find some peace if she can confront the boy the police say killed her son. But the leader says, unless she has the correct address, he cannot help. It's clear he isn't going to help. OK, never mind, let's go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You have nothing to be sorry about. I am sorry. Very sorry. There seems to be a general acceptance of these street brawls by many here, a rite of passage for teenage boys. This attitude needs to change if these fatal brawls are to be stamped out. Clearly, the schools and the police are really struggling to work out why tower arm breaks out and indeed how to stop these boys from street fighting. But if there's one voice that can possibly have an impact and get through to them, it's that of a mother who's lost a son in the fighting. Saya hanya berpesan sama <laughs> sama anak-anak seusia almarhum Billy, anak saya. Jangan tawuran lagi. Cukup anak saya aja yang seperti itu. Yang lain jangan. Her heartbreak is shared by Audi's mother. Melahirkan, membesarkan seorang anak itu bukan hal mudah untuk seorang ibu. Jadi kalau kalian melakukan hal bodoh seperti tawuran, itu yang merasakan sakit adalah ibu. After Audi's death, Alita found a school essay he'd written on the very day he died. It sounds like a premonition. The afternoon was like my final afternoon. This afternoon was the scariest, the longest afternoon of my life. I don't feel the pain anymore. If only I could turn back time. <laughs> 